Hey, welcome back to Muslim Minds. Today we're gonna watch Judaism versus Christianity versus Islam. So it's gonna be kind of a spicy video, but we'll get into it. Okay. Yes, we'll start now. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are three Abrahamic religions that share certain similarities and differences. Judaism, which already I can hear a war in the comment section, <laughs> just like off the. Hey, bat. the graphics are really nice though. Yeah, that's very really pretty. Look at the colors. I already like the green better. <laughs> originated around 2000 BC is the oldest, followed by Christianity in 26 AD and Islam in 610 AD. These three Abrahamic religions share a common historical and spiritual foundation, with each branching out into distinct beliefs, practices, and traditions over time. The God worshipped in Judaism is Elohim, a single, all-powerful, and transcendent being. In Christianity, Jesus is the central figure of worship, believed to be the Son of God and the Savior of humanity. In Islam, Allah is the one and only God, whose message was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad. Important figures in each religion who are not worshipped include Moses in Judaism, who led the Israelites out of Egypt and received the Ten Commandments from God, St. Paul in Christianity, who was a major contributor to the New Testament and spread Christianity throughout the Roman Empire, and Muhammad in Islam, the last prophet who conveyed Allah's message to humanity through the Quran. The holy books of these religions are the... T I don't know if this is controversial to say, but it just kind of made me think how in both Judaism and Islam, the most important figure they put was the prophets, but in Christianity they put St. Paul, not even Jesus. It just, I don't know, that just made me think. Yeah. I don't know if it's right or not, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I honestly think for the Christians, the, so far this video is a little bit unfair. They should put like at least the Trinity <coughs> instead of just Jesus because, you know, although they believe Jesus to be God, they believe you know, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit, all are God, right? right. So, from a, you know, if a Jew or a lay person or a Muslim is watching this video, they might get the impression that, oh, they just worship Jesus, you know, as God without understanding their concept. Again, Hamza and I, we think the Trinity is also pretty hard to rationalize, but um, it is the core or the kernel of Christianity. So, I think, you yeah. should, maybe I'm looking too much at just the beginning of the video. Tanakh for Judaism, a collection of sacred Hebrew texts, the Bible for Christianity, comprised of the Old and New Testaments, and the Quran for Islam, believed to be the direct revelation of Allah's word to Muhammad. Each religion has a designated place of worship, the synagogue for Jews, the church for Christians, and the mosque for Muslims. The architecture, rituals, and services in each place of worship vary according to the religious tradition and the cultural context. The prayer leaders in these religions also have distinct titles and roles a rabbi in Judaism who serves as a spiritual guide and teacher, a pastor in Christianity who leads the congregation in worship and provides spiritual counseling, and an imam in Islam who leads the Muslim community in prayer and offers religious guidance. Prayer rituals differ among the three religions. In Judaism, Amidah is the central prayer. Performed while standing offers religious guidance. Prayer rituals differ among the three religions. In Judaism, Amidah is the central prayer. Performed while standing and consisting of blessings and supplications. Christianity's liturgy is a structured public worship service with prayers, readings, and rituals that vary according to denomination. Salah, the obligatory Islamic prayer, is performed five times a day and includes physical actions and recitations from the Quran. Greetings among believers convey peace and... In traditional Judaism, they even have a very similar prayer format to how Muslims pray. Really? I was just going to ask yeah. about that because I was going to ask, do the other religions, Christianity and Judaism, have like even a prayer that they do, like a... A guideline. Even in Catholicism, they have a uh, like a, t a type of physical prayer with movement, like planking, like planking. <laughs> or, like, so, they <laughs> have, yeah. so they have like a physical form of worship. Even like, in Christianity, they have like physical forms of worship. Like you know, they would plank directly in front of like an altar of Jesus and, and pray. Muslims obviously are prostrating, we're standing, we're bowing. Yeah, and Saint, in the Bible, Jesus or Isa Al Salam on his head and he prayed with yeah, in sajda, uh, which is prostration. Prostration. Honestly, like I like to bring up this point. So you know, Jesus spoke Aramaic. He would have been saying Allah, Allah. That's how you say you know God in uh, Aramaic. And you know, he had a beard. You know, modestly dressed and prayed with his head like on the ground. If you saw him modern day, you would think he's a Muslim. Yeah, <laughs> just, I mean, just want to say that. Yeah, and for us as Muslims, <coughs> Jesus Isa Islam is the Messiah. We we'll, we believe he will return. And for us to be entered into Jannah, heaven, we have to believe in we Jesus. We have to accept him as a messenger. It's literally so. in uh, hadith, which is a prophetic saying from the Prophet Muhammad. 
if we don't believe in Isa, Jesus, we can't <coughs> enter heaven. So that just shows our respect for uh, Jesus, uh, Isa and Yeah. And goodwill. In Judaism, shalom expresses the wish for peace. In Christianity, peace be with you conveys a blessing. And in Islam, assalamu alaikum means peace be upon you. With 14.8 million followers. Assalamu alaikum. But you know, it's funny. That's good though, he's, he's yeah. said it. But. Salam and assalamu alaikum and shalom. It's actually the same word, means yeah. peace. You can tell it sounds the same. Yeah. So. I've never heard a Christian say peace be with you. I think. I think maybe, I maybe that's a standard. Maybe saying. from like traditional well, obviously they may Like say back it. in the day, probably. Oh, maybe. Some... I've, I've never heard that as a standard though. Yeah, because, oh. you know, modern day, you know, people don't, or Christians, you know, there's so many different sects, they do probably just greet each other with whatever they, you know. Yeah. But Peace be upon you. With 14.8 million followers of Judaism, 2.4 billion followers of Christianity, and 1.9 billion followers of Islam worldwide. ...about this. So, if you break down the religion sect by sect, the largest sect in Christianity is Catholicism, obviously, and then in Islam, it's Sunni Islam. But the largest sect in any religion in the world is Sunni Islam. There are more Sunni Islam, or there's sort of there's more people in Sunni Islam than any other uh, denomination, denomination of Christianity or Christianity. any religion in the so world. So any so Sunni Islam is the biggest followed like faith, school of thought, school of thought, or like yeah. faith trajectory, you could say, because you know there are different sects in Christianity, but some of them differ so much that you know others would consider them heretical or kind of outside right. the fold of saving. Even in Islam, this exists. Um, but not primarily through, through our, but not primarily in our sects because we have Sunni and Shia, and um, all of them are considered Muslims. Sunni yeah, and Shia. as long but, as they're not like in some kind of extreme deviant sect, yeah. most of them have the same core beliefs about God and, and the prophecy. Yeah. And all a this. cool point we just saw in another video. Um, right <coughs> now, Islam is at two billion, Subhanallah, and by twenty seventy, like to overall, to, it's going to be the biggest in the world, even above Christianity. So yeah, and also to mention, some people like to bring a contentious point where they say, "Oh, Muslims, you guys are just having kids like crazy. That's why you're." But if you actually look through conversion rate as well, Islam is the fastest growing religion as well. Mm. <coughs> Again, guys, we're going to be biased. Okay, so chill. <laughs> okay. Why these religions have a significant impact on the global population? Israel has the highest Jewish population. The United States has the highest Christian population, and Indonesia has the highest Muslim population. But Indonesia, that's crazy. It's not even like Saudi Arabia, it's literally Indonesia. SubhanAllah. Islam traveled to Indonesia, and now they're the <coughs> biggest in the world. <coughs> yeah. SubhanAllah. Cut that part out. Israel has the highest Jewish population, the United States has the highest Christian population, and Indonesia has the highest Muslim population. Each religion has its own sacred pilgrimage sites. The Western Wall in Jerusalem for Jews, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem for Christians, and the Kaaba in Mecca for Muslims. These sites hold deep spiritual significance for the faith. There are some non-Muslims who are confused about the Kaaba. We don't worship the Kaaba, it's literally just a building. Like when you go to church, for example, and you sit in a church and you're praying, you're not praying to like the benches or the walls of the church, or the fact that you go to the church doesn't mean you're like worshiping the building itself or the structure. The Kaaba is an empty house. It's just a unification point. It's a structure at the heart of where the muslims pray in direction to allah no yeah. muslim on earth worships the kaaba whatsoever and we actually we it's we believe uh abraham ibrahim <clears throat> alayhi salam built it with his son uh ismail yeah, so sure. we believe the origin of the kaaba was built by abraham so yes. some people also say oh well the kaaba is a house of idol worship it, it's its origins are pagan well we can't really know for certain scientifically as of right now where the origins of the kaaba are however it is understood in the islamic world that the origin the origin of this structure is through abraham for a monotheistic house of worship you come to this house you pray to god just like a holy temple like western wall um you know or like any other church it's it's just like that except it's supposed to be like you know the holiest site for uh, the muslims where we all kind of gather all over the world to worship the one god no images there's no images in there there's no kind of idols it's just an, one big sanctuary where you worship god faithful and attract millions of pilgrims annually major holidays in each religion include yom kippur in judaism a solemn day of fasting and repentance christmas in christianity celebrating the birth of jesus and Eid al adha in islam commemorating the sacrifice of ibrahim second tier holidays are hanukkah in judaism an eight-day festival of lights easter in christianity celebrating the resurrection of jesus and Eid al fitr in islam marking the end of ramadan
The concept of the afterlife varies between the three religions. In Judaism, the promised land is Olam Haba, often described as a peaceful place amongst the clouds. In Christianity, the promised land is heaven, often portrayed as a kingdom above the sky. In Islam, the promised land is Jannah, a beautiful garden filled with delights. Similarly, places of punishment also differ. In Judaism, Gehenna is often described as a gloomy and scary place. Christianity refers to hell as a place full of fire and eternal suffering. In Islam, Jahannam is a dark place with no light and black-colored fire. Every religion has a unique embodiment of evil. In Judaism, Satan serves as an agent of God, responsible for testing humans. In Christianity, the devil is commonly portrayed as a fallen angel. In Islam, Shaitan represents a rebellious figure, acting against God's will. Actually, this is pretty interesting because Shaitan is Islam, Shaitan is Satan, and Shaitan is a devil. So, it all kind of comes together. And just like, if you guys weren't aware, we believe Judaism and Christianity, when they were revealed, it was the truth. And we believe just Islam is the final continuation. But we just believe over time Judaism and Christianity was corrupted. So that's why God or Allah sent the Prophet Muhammad with Islam, which is the final message and he's the final messenger. But we respect Judaism and Christianity, but we, we just believe in the doctrines of Islam as the final um, religion for mankind. Yeah, we respect Judaism and Christianity as the closest adherence to what we believe to be the truth is, which is Islam. Yeah, we're all There's, Abrahamic faiths. Satan yeah. represents a rebellious figure acting against God's will. The concept of a false prophet or deceiver exists in all three religions. In Judaism, the false prophet is Mashiach Shekhar, who falsely claims to be the Messiah. In Christianity, the Antichrist is a figure of evil opposing Christ at the end times. In Islam, the Dajjal is an evil being causing chaos and deceiving many before being defeated by the true Messiah, Jesus. Each religion emphasizes specific deeds and virtues. In Judaism, the greatest deed is Tikkun Olam, the duty to build or repair the world so it can be a better place. In Christianity, love and compassion are paramount, including loving one's enemies. In Islam, the greatest deed is Jihad, the struggle in the... Jihad... It just means struggle in the way of Allah. This could be through war, could be through any other act of worship. You know, you're, maybe you're oppressed, maybe you're in prison, and you just hold tight to your faith, you have trust in your creator. That's also a form of jihad. The name of God and sacrificing personal enjoyment to help others. Violations and sins are also viewed differently. In Judaism, the worst violation is idolatry, which involves betraying God to worship other deities. Christianity identifies seven deadly sins. Gluttony, lust, greed, wrath, sloth, pride, and envy. The Christians, correct me if I'm wrong, this doesn't apply to all Christian sects. I believe like in Catholicism, there is a varying level of sin. But in other Christian denominations, all sin is viewed the same. It doesn't matter what it is. Hmm. In my opinion, I don't think that makes much sense. I think obviously like, you know, for example, murder is not the same as stealing a candy from a store. Um, they say sin is sin, but I mean... Yeah, that's true. But there's also different levels of, you know, the implications yeah. of what it may have. As Muslims, we believe there's different levels to sins. Yeah, and some, and a lot of Christians believe this as well, but then there are some denominations that believe that, no, every, every sin, sin is, is treated same. the same. Like yeah. a sin is just a sin. Yeah, it's evil. yeah exactly. In Islam, the worst violation is shirk, worshipping more than one god. Throughout history, great kingdoms have been established under these religions. The greatest Jewish kingdom was the Kingdom of Israel, which existed from 1047 B.C. to 930 B.C. The greatest Christian kingdom was the Byzantine Empire, lasting from 330 AD to 1453 AD. The greatest Islamic kingdom was the Abbasid Caliphate, existing from 750 AD to 1517 AD. Influential rulers have also emerged from these traditions. King David was the greatest Jewish king. Constantine the Great was the greatest Christian king. And Mehmed II was the greatest Muslim king. Notable women also hold important roles in each religion. In Judaism, Sarah, the wife of Abraham, is highly regarded. In Christianity, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is venerated. In Islam, Khadija, the wife and mentor of Muhammad, is highly respected. Also, would like to mention, Sarah and Mary are also highly revered in Islam as well. Right. I think, like in the Quran, there's a whole surah or chapter named Maryam. Yep. So we really respect Mary, you know, the mother of Isa, the mother of Jesus. Very highly, both Sarah and Mary, both highly venerated as a Muslim, you have to respect them. Special foods are associated with religious observances and rituals. In Judaism, marar and karoset are consumed during Passover. In Christianity, bread... What are marar and karoset? 
me. <laughs> it looks like <laughs> beans and garlic. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. And wine symbolized the body and blood of Jesus during the Eucharist. In Islam, dates and honey are commonly consumed to break the fast during Ramadan. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are three Abrahamic religions that share a common historical and spiritual foundation. Despite their similarities, each religion has distinct beliefs, practices, and customs. Understanding the nuances of these religions helps shed light on their role in shaping human history and culture. Wow, that was a really great video. I actually really enjoyed it. And every all the graphics, all the information they did, Clear they, they would... Yeah. They said something that might consider controversial stuff, but they presented it in such a nice way. Yeah, it and I like how I kind of I want to watch their other videos. It didn't seem very biased. I was, you know, yeah, uh, that's why I really appreciate it. it. Seemed to be kind of like a faithful representation. They definitely did their research on every religion and did respect yeah. to Islam. Like which... small details, like Jahannam having black fire. That's yeah, pretty impressive. Yeah, but um, um also saying Assalamu alaikum stuff like that. Yeah, everything was very good. I think this was very enjoyable video to watch if you guys want to see us watch uh, more videos from nerd robot on you know religions uh I, there's diff there's one here muslim muslims in different countries gods from different countries definitely looks interesting if you guys want to see more videos from this channel or any other channel you know let us know in the comments any any christian or jewish or muslim viewer you know if you guys want us to react to different videos definitely leave suggestions in the comment section below and if you're not in the Abrahamic faith either, um, atheist or some other kind of uh, belief, then you can definitely also leave us some video ideas in the comments and we'll be more than happy to take a look. But yeah, guys, like the video, subscribe. We would, that would really help us uh, out to grow this channel. And salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam.